what's going on guys so you know i'm done today with working out and all that uh there's not a whole lot to do i was wondering what kind of video should i make today you know my daily videos and the other day i did a little poll talk to you guys and said do you guys want to see more than just my weight loss challenge you know i have a lot of other things going on especially with daily videos you guys can watch my life and you all said yes you wanted to see everyday life other challenges i'm doing stuff like that so that with that in mind uh i started remembering i have all this footage from a dive that i did a month ago that i haven't been able to use i just didn't know how to edit didn't you know because i thought this was going to be a lot harder to edit i didn't have the time uh, i just didn't know what to do um and it's been bothering me that i haven't shown it because it really needs to be shown this is some powerful stuff, and I really wanted to talk about it. So in my mind, I was like, I'm going to do some cinematic, dramatic, crazy stuff and edit it in a way that everybody's crying. And But in the end, you know what? I just sat down. I turned on my light. I turned on the camera. I got my little microphone, and I was like, let's just talk about it. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, let's just get into it. So what you're looking at here is footage of a beautiful little blue spotted stingray that's been helplessly caught in an abandoned fishing net. Although these divers were able to be the heroes on this day and prevent a needless loss in a supposedly protected marine sanctuary, it still raises a lot of questions for me. The first of which is, why was this ghost net here in the first place? And my second question is, how much more net was down here killing anything that swims by. You see, I'm a local here in Darwin, and in general, especially compared to a lot of other countries and islands, the, re the reefs and dive sites here are very clean and nice. Um, so I was really surprised to see this, and honestly, I was pretty embarrassed. And so the divers that sent me this footage uh, of the Stingray, they they aren't even from this island and i was really appalled to think that their first visit this net this this bad situation could be their first and last impression of our beautiful island and dive sites like we're not taking care of it and we have to do something about it and so we got in touch um and we had a whole bunch of divers meet up at a resort called El Sueño to figure out how we could remove this net because apparently it was massive and it was way too much for these guys to do on their own. So these guys did a cry for help on Facebook. I got a couple of friends, you know, my boy Alex and uh, some other friends, and we headed down to the resort to meet Justice and the divers that found the net. And yeah, we talked about it. We got knives and stuff and we got in the water and it was pretty bad. The net was covering hundreds of square meters of brittle, old and delicate, hard and soft corals, like a blanket of death. We looked in awe, but then we got to work. We had to gingerly pick off this net, small pieces at a time, while trying not to break decades old table corals and others. It was crazy. Like I said before, in the two years here, and with hundreds of dives all over the island, I've never seen a net strung out this far and wide in a sanctuary. I mean, sometimes you run into small ghost nets and maybe it's not even in a sanctuary. So you and your buddies just kind of take it back to the beach and don't really complain. But this was a different story and I'll tell you why. And maybe we can even talk about solutions or at least possible ones. The first thing is obvious, the fishermen that lost this net were obviously inside the sanctuary boundaries, illegally casting their giant net in a circle with the boat. The net had rocks tied to the bottom, which is common, so that one end sinks while the other one stays at the surface. That way they just catch any fish that's swimming by. Although net fishing is as common as it is destructive, I say it's sad because they still collect sanctuary fees from us divers. Even when you're not at a sanctuary, the Bentai Dagat, who enforces it, will come and find you and take your money, which 
I usually don't have a problem with. But where does that money go if they're not actually protecting the reef? Here in this little dive community, I constantly hear people complaining that we're being charged at sanctuaries and pretty much anywhere we dive. And they're supposed to be the protectors of these sanctuaries where they don't allow boats or littering or anything like that. But, you know, they take our money, we get in the water, and we're constantly dodging fish nets and anchor spots that exploded a reef and things like that. So we're like, what, what are we paying for? You know, as divers, we're cleaning up all the trash we see. They should be paying us, if anything. You know, so it gets frustrating and... You know, we actually, or most of us, or I can speak for myself, we actually believe in sanctuaries and sanctuary fees to make it sustainable, but there's no accountability for where the money's going. There's no protection. I understand the sentiment. I really do. Not a single diver, not a single diver would have an issue paying a small fee for diving in a pristine location, knowing the money goes to sustaining it. It's the same as paying to hike in a wildlife park in a protected sanctuary. The upkeep of those places with the rangers and facilities, etc. Take money. Without the money, the animals wouldn't be protected and, well, things go downhill from there. Everyone understands that. But what we don't understand is paying for nothing. Why do I have to pay $3 to dive off the beach? while fishermen and spear fishermen do their best to strip it dry. Like I said, I believe in sanctuaries. We just need more solutions. So I don't think I'm the one that's gonna solve this or anything. This is a really, you know, decades old problem. Um, but still, it's hard not to try to think of solutions when you come across this kind of thing. I mean, let's face it, it's not sustainable how it is right now. Uh, these nets, if left out there like this, I mean, you saw the footage, they're going to kill everything, not just the fish, but the corals, everything. And this is the biggest market, the biggest attraction, the biggest reason that people come to Dawin or a lot of these locations in the Philippines. So if you kill all the fish and all the reef and all the dive sites, it's not good for the economy, the fishermen or anyone for that matter. Well guys, I don't want to act like I have all the answers. You know, most of these dive resorts and companies have been here way longer than I have. You know, the owners, they're used to this, but you know, it's still hard not to think that there's a solution out there. And I think we do need to progress eventually. <laughs> um, people shouldn't be coming here and having to see giant ghost nets on a supposedly protected pristine reef just killing everything and there is a solution out there I, I don't know if i i don't know what it is but you know would it be that hard to start an organization with all these resorts all these businesses that rely on dive tourism or free diving or whatever and come together pool some money it wouldn't take that much and you know maybe i don't know hire your own coast guard you know hire some of the the old fishermen that aren't making a lot of money um, and have them patrolling these already government set up sanctuaries uh, and keeping fishermen and anything destructive out of these areas. Is that, I don't know if that's been addressed or what, is that a solution or a start of one? I've dove all over the world and I've seen projects like this, like Wakatobi. I mean, they hired all the fishermen to guard their one pristine area sanctuary and it's one of the best in the world it's an awesome sustainable circle it's just awesome and it's one of the best reefs in the world so i think if we did that even if it costs some money uh you know it'd be worth it you know the the economy the fish <laughs> the ecosystem everything would be restored this Darwin would be a beacon, just like Wakatobi is for Indonesia. Darwin would be the beacon of success. You know, we have Apple Island. It's I see fishing boats. I I've seen fifty or sixty fishing boats in some of the biggest sanctuary areas. Um, so I don't know what the solution is, guys. I'm not trying to preach to anyone, but I'm not going to waste this footage. Thank you again. 
Uh, I'm gonna put the names of the two doctor divers that gave me the stingray footage and then invited me out to help remove this fishing net. Um, and if you guys watch to the very end of this video, let's do the emoji thing. I want you to put a uh, fish emoji in the comments below. All right, now we're gonna get to a regular video that tomorrow, boom, do something cool. All right, see you guys. Tomorrow. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and all the sh you don't do. Well, I'ma make hella shit that I don't become you.